go. Thank you. Not since we're recording. Okay. So, uh, welcome to the, uh, it is the 12th, yes, uh, the core implementation sync for August 12th. Uh, I guess first up on the agenda, uh, initiatives. Um, yeah, so release process, uh, there is a, blog, or, um, a draft design for the blog post. Those are all up. Uh, yeah, the uh, blog post should hopefully, well, it'll be out the second the signs are out. And the designs are looking pretty good, um, but we'll have to do one final review of those. So today, maybe tomorrow, we'll see. Um, yeah, uh, JS IPFS uh, 0.37 has been released. And Alan is saying that he will update the release process for JS IPFS to match GoIPFS. Or, well, in all the ways it should. Um, okay. Uh, there are no updates to the testing infra process, uh, as far as I know. Well, actually, I take that back. That's totally a lie. Uh, there are updates to testing infra process. Uh, Rule has made a really wonderful document um, for uh, testing infra. Let me find it. Here is the design doc. Uh, this is just his proposal for like how all pieces should fit together. Ideally, we can reuse parts of existing systems to just make this work. Um, but he's like trying to come up with a very generic system that can kind of like supersede other systems where you just like plug in custom Docker images, plug in a custom test runners, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so next up, garbage collection and pinning. Any updates there? I don't think so. Nope, no updates, okay. Uh, delegated routing uh, released in JSFFS 0.37. Yeah, that can probably come off now. It's pretty much oh, done. Okay. Well, we'll leave it there. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean delegated routing as a, a thing. Oh, as a thing, got it, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, gossip's up, Vasco. Yeah, Flash goes out, but oh, no. we've got uh, JSLPTP 026 released last week, and that has support for Gossip Sub. Uh, we just need to finish up an open PR to JSIPFS to roll that as the default router. Okay. Uh, subdomain gateways, I guess this is kind of related, uh, but uh, we have a PR for uh, DNS over HTTPS, which will allow us to make... Um, uh, DNS link significantly more secure. Uh, not entirely related to this, but this is the whole point of the subdomain thing is for security, for a big part is. So I'm just going to stick that there. Um, and I will link to this in a second. We're running into some issues that we can also talk about later in the call. No, that's not the place. Uh, okay, wrap up consolidation. Yeah, so JSLPDP uh, consolidation is almost done. There are a couple modules that I probably won't include in this round. It's like the NAT Manager and Keychain. One, because NAT Manager isn't actually done yet. And then uh, Keychain is actually not currently in LibPDP. It's kind of standalone by itself, and it's only being used right now in JSIPFS. So I'll probably wait to do that as a separate one so that because that will cause some API changes to happen. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, but I should be done with that this week. And Jacob, you are up again on distributed signaling. Yeah, uh, yeah. So going through um, creating an example of distributed signaling over a relay. Um, as I've been going through that, I've been finding miscellaneous issues, uh, like the JS multi adder wasn't handling um, circuit relay peered when you're announcing your relay on there. So just fixing stuff as going through with that. Um, one thing that I'm not tackling right now is the distributed ice, but we're probably going to need to take care of that at some point. Um, because otherwise, if we just use like the default Google ice servers, that becomes very easy to block in places like China. Uh, ice is discovering your external address, right? What's that? Ice is discovering your external address? Yes, yes. So we have that with AutoNet. Right. Uh, which I think may be sufficient in many cases, where like you just as you connect to uh, IPFS servers, 
or in various places. Like you can just ask them, hey, what is my external address? Um, and then they'll start dialing back to you. So I, I think we may be covered there. It's not really, it's distributed. It's like, we still like, you still have to find these servers, which can be tricky, but yeah. Right. Uh, another thing that should go into this header is Viso has had this PR up, or uh, spec PR about um, uh, fractal upgrading. Uh, this is effectively, uh, not, what is it called? Um, I guess, stun, maybe the right term? Uh, over relay, where like uh, it's trying to like, figure out. Basically, you connect someone over relay, and then they tell you like, uh, or then you coordinate a uh, simultaneous connect uh, to try to use like TCP simultaneous node open or a UDP simultaneous open to bypass uh, routers. So, uh, you should read that. Anyone on the topic should read that and like yep. try to. Consolidate. The, the concern there is that it does require establishing a full connection first. Um, it shouldn't be that expensive if we're already using relays. Maybe the problem with our current relay system is it doesn't scale well. Um, then we have no issue about that. So, yeah, okay. I think one of the things we're going to look at doing is we'll replace the signaling servers that we have long term for JS IPFS, and then replace that with uh, relay servers specifically for JS. Yeah. I, th I think to make this fully usable, I think we may have to have a packet switching system somewhere um, because relays have this problem with like, like, if you want to connect to one node on every single relay, you have to have a connection to every single relay, which means everyone needs a connection to every single relay, which just doesn't work. Um, like we could do this actually without packet switching by just like, they can like connect one relay and then the relays all connect to each other. So then you have two hop forwards, um, but we don't currently do this. Uh, It'd be slightly easier if you just had like packets. Like you basically you pick your outbound relay, uh, you connect to that, you send out all of your data to that relay, and then that relay routes it to the correct other relay, and then it's basically everyone picks their like gateway node. Uh, and I think that maybe how really should work, but like this would require a fair amount of like thinking and work to make it work. Yeah. Uh, okay. So moving on, IPNS. Aiden. Uh, yeah. Um, so one of the PRs got merged. Huzzah. <laughs> Um, which means there are, we are one out of two PRs because I've separated out uh, some stuff to make it so that we can actually like use this, you know, use this and, and have it, you know, be functional. Um, that one is following some design reviews from last week. Thank you everybody for helping with that. Uh, almost, it is, it, it, the end appears in sight. Um, a couple of design related issues uh, came up related to the libp2p record validator interface uh, that you should take a look at if you're interested. Basically, we can't figure out if things are equal, and we only seem to care about the scenario of picking the best record when there are many ways where you could combine records. Uh, and there's this issue on like having a separate name sys that I know uh, some folks were interested in. I'm not sure if they're on the call or not. Uh, but if you care, please comment so that I can do what you want. And that's all for me. Okay. Uh, Alan? Or how oh, she's here? No. Yeah, Alan. there's no uh, there's no more um, news on Nothing? the okay. Mi migration. Okay. Package managers. Maybe Jerk should be taken off this. I mean, it's all packages, I guess, but. Uh, Let's see. Well, Jim or anyone, Dominic, no package manager updates you want to include? Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I have one, I guess. Uh, I should put here. Uh, Dirk has been working really hard on getting uh, or improving the speed of bit swap. Uh, so, if you want to look at, just go to the bit swap issues. Uh, there's a the latest issue is one second. Quickly find this. Here it is. It's about improving uh, request sharding, like basically figure out which peers to ask which blocks or uh, for from which blocks. Um, uh, this is the beginning of all traction, and it's probably where he's going to start work. Uh, so if you have comments or ideas about BitSwap, uh, ask there. Um, other update is uh, 
I had a good talk with Alex uh, this morning today about um, uh, ad performance. Um, so uh, I guess, well, this is more package managers update, really a package managers update, uh, but yeah, we can skip that actually. Okay. Uh, JSFFS, async await refactor. Sure thing. I saw someone's added this here, and rightfully so. It's a um, ongoing, long-running um, refactor to uh, switch to using a promise-based APIs throughout the um, throughout the code base um, instead of callbacks. Um, it is. It involves IPFS, libp2p, IPLD, multi-formats. There are 67 repos that need to be refactored. Um, I've linked to the issue there. There is lots of good reasons for doing this. There are justifications in that issue, um, like things like um, like smaller bundle size, better stack traces, um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, you know, just have working with promises is kind of a more modern way of working in JavaScript, and hopefully we might be able to um, gain more people uh, who are interested in working with IPFS if we don't present a uh, like a. a an API that's seen as kind of out of date in any way. Um, so, like, it's there are there are some reasons. Uh, go and read them. Um, it's been going on for a long time. There are a lot of repos, um, and we uh, we have not resourced people to solely work on this during their quarters. So it's been kind of a uh, when you have time, um, get as much done as you can. Um, the, in the issue, there is a list of those 67 repos I told you about, and um, the current person who is the owner of that um, of that particular not not necessarily the owner of the repo, but the owner of the uh, refactor for that particular repo. There's a status emoji, as you may expect, coming from an issue that I made, uh, as a red apple ad, red apple for something that hasn't uh, been started yet orange for a uh, pull request, and green for something that's merged and released. We've currently done around 64% of what we need to do, um, and we are, um, the kind of notable exception is um, libp 2 p stuff. I think that um, it's been, there are many, many libp 2 p repos, uh, and only two people working full time on it, and not working full time on this particular endeavor. Um, and the process of, refactoring them to be uh, async await based instead of uh, callbacks is more tricky because we're, we're not just refactoring async await it's just uh, it's just it's to using um, async iterators as well um, instead of uh, our, our regular pull streams so the refactors in lib p2p are more involved than just swapping from callbacks to promises um, so the status is just that we're kind of chugging through. I think we've one, one repo that has now surfaced as something we should definitely work on next and get refactored is uh, IPFS repo. Um, and because that is blocking uh, a number of people, I think um, IPLD did an update and that somehow it depends on the async await IPFS repo uh, for GC. Um, our new async await based repo actually has a streaming API and we really need that for garbage collection um, so that we don't run into out of memory uh, problems when we have a repo that has many, many things in it. Um, and there was another thing, oh, the repo migration tool, which now exists, um, uh, but is yet to be merged, also depends on the async await version of IPFS repo. So we need to get that merged and, and done next uh, as a priority. Um, but we did, um, it's worth mentioning that we did do an exercise of prioritizing these repos in that issue. We have, um, we've p 0 the ones that are, basically have no dependencies on other modules. Um, and then um, we, we uh, gave the others p1, p1, p2, p3 for, um, when we should when, when abouts we should be uh, uh, be refactoring them. It's tricky because every every refactor is a breaking change. There's a lot to coordinate, um, and uh, it's just it's taking. I knew it was going to take a long time. It's taking longer than I expected or wanted, um, but we are working on it, and we will eventually get there. How's that for an update? <laughs> it's a great update. Go ahead, Jacob. 
Uh, there is, so we talked about the DHT being something that uses the data store interface. Um, Keychain is another thing that uses it. So I'm gonna tackle both of those two. I'll probably try to do that tomorrow so that IPFS repo isn't blocked going into JSIPFS. So then we can just upgrade all three of those at the same time. Right, thank you, Jacob. Okay, uh, now we're on design proposals. Uh, last week we had IPNS for PubSub, resolved all of our issues. Uh, one sec. Uh, Sorry, follow up. We have the... Sorry, can I make a follow up question on the previous topic? Yes. Sorry. Um, I'm curious if uh, putting people, like something that was discussed over. Um, a thread last week was, you know, what would it look like if we did a sprint or a spike on this or um, had a couple of people like dedicate full time to this in Q4, would that like significantly improve and, be, and help us be able to, to knock this thing out instead of having it continue on for, um, you know, at pace, like we've been working on it for like what, uh, you know, six, six months and we're 64%. And so um, presumably we'd have like another six this months to be 100%. Um, like, what is our pathway to, to that? Um, is bringing on someone or, or helping people externally in the, who are not already contributing this to, to pitch in on this sort of stuff feasible? Um, what's our path forward? Yeah, so it was suggested that we could do a uh, sprint where the JS core team um, worked solely on this like i find it because it was started so long ago now it's quite hard to kind of justify the the package manager's goal other than this will make js ipfs significantly easier to debug significantly easier to maintain and work with um, in in the long run but it's just something that needs to be needs to be done so yeah we would progress a whole lot faster if we had everyone working on it in terms of getting people in to work on it I'm hesitant to get people who have no experience. Like this, so there are repos where um, it is literally just a, a mechanical kind of um, swap to uh, callbacks, um, uh, sorry, swap from callbacks to uh, promise-based interface. Um, and you know, that would be okay. For the low level kind of libp2p networking stuff, I'm more hesitant to allow any just or anyone who hasn't had experience in libp2p at all to, to work on that because it's because it's so critical to ipfs and the way it works um so yeah the, if there were people who have contributed to the repo um who, who want to pick up that stuff then absolutely and we have had contributors from outside um do do this this stuff we've had like I think Dirk started doing this uh, before he was started working um, full time on IPFS, as well as um, a number of other contributors who um, who are in the community. So um, it's definitely possible, but it w yeah, uh, we could get an outside agency to do it too. Um, but again, it would be only be on a certain amount, and we I think that you know the ones that were very easy have been um, largely done. I need to double check on that, but um, uh, yeah, I'm just a little bit hesitant, I guess. I'm not, I'm not completely averse to it, but um, yeah. I, like I would love to just pull everyone in a JS core team and just say, work on this till it's done. But I know that, that, uh, that, <laughs> that there are other things we want to achieve this quarter. And that's largely why it hasn't been, um, you know, done really, really quickly because it has always been a, um, when you get time to do this, um, uh, you know, uh, and everyone's super busy the whole time anyway. So it, <laughs> it's just, it's just taking a long time. So, um, totally valid. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if that answers any, any more than uh, 100%. anything at all. <laughs> yeah. I think the other thing to note is that like the, in the thread we talked about, like there's those four core modules of like, getting the multiplexer, like a multiplexer like mplex done, getting the connection interface done, and then a transport and multi-stream select done. Because if we can concentrate on getting those four completed, then, and like creating some examples of this is how you do those these specific things, then rolling that up the chain can, like we can start actually outsourcing that of like, if that would be easier for people in the community to be able to say, hey, 
this is how things used to be done with pulse streams. This is how you do that same thing with the async iterators. And now that, that makes it easier to do even in spare time or whatever. It's just having those, those examples, but getting the dedicated time to do those, those four would be um, good. Yeah, I think, I, um, so we have an MPLEX implementation. I've spent time this week, sorry, last week working on multi-stream select and I, I, in my opinion, it's about 90% done. We have two PRs for web sockets and TCP transports open. Uh, so they are just in the process of being reviewed. So like we're close with that goal. Yes, yeah. Awesome, thank you very much for the update. Uh, so uh, now we have design of your proposals. Uh, yeah, so uh, we finished up one last week. You can look at the resolutions. New one, uh, resolving HTTP, HTTP multi-layer spec. This is not IPFS, but it's something we need and there's no multi layer container, so we can do it. Uh, the issue here is we are trying to use multi adders to configure uh, DNS uh, resolvers uh, in IPFS so that we can actually use like, things like DNS over TLS, which would be awesome. Unfortunately, um, we have an HTTP, or, like, so like, we want to be able to point to an H some HTTP endpoint, so like use this endpoint. Uh, and in many cases, we actually need to like include the domain that we're using that endpoint. So what I think about doing this, we could say like slash HTTP slash domain name slash path because almost all HTTP endpoints actually like or, well, they expect you to pass in a domain name. Uh, it's required in HTTP 1.1, uh, and most people use HTTP 1.01 now because it's been out for uh, I don't know how long, but a very long time. Um, unfortunately, this uh, HTTP is currently defined as taking no arguments, and we already have use cases that use it without taking any arguments. Uh, so, for example, if you look at this, uh, we have slash HTTP slash PDB dash web uh, CRT dash direct. So, you need to figure out how to deal with this. Um, I am going to try to come up with a proposal by Wednesday or whatever we end up having this meeting, but yeah, this is something we just need to solve. Um, we have other random questions around like HTTP, HTTPS, and TLS, where ideally it should be slash TLS slash HTTP as we compose these things instead of just having a custom HTTPS. Same thing for WebSocket, WebSocket secure. We need some kind of upgrade path, a lot of stuff. Uh, basically, we need to just have a conversation about this. Um, so I would like to have a meeting to discuss this again probably on Wednesday so we have I have some time on uh, Tuesday afternoon to like summarize all this for everyone um, yeah if you want to come please sign up uh, and I will try to schedule a meeting that can work with everyone blockers asks anything you need any reviews any people that need to like you know comment on something or merge something or get something done Yes, Al. Um, I have a PR open on the js.ipfs.io website. Um, uh, and the, so I think Moxie are not working specifically on that website anymore. So it's up to us to review and, um, and merge that sort of thing. It was more involved because, uh, so what I was doing was updating the examples on the website to use the new constructor for JS IPFS in the latest version. Um, it's more involved because the libraries that the website was using, um, I don't know why it's transpiling stuff, but it's trans it was transpiling, it is transpiling stuff on the site and um, I needed to upgrade the library to support async await because um, it was old. Um, so the PR is way more involved than I wanted it to be. Um, I could, I would love for someone to have a um, a look at that, look over it, like someone more, maybe more front end focused to have a look at that and um, uh, and um, approve it. <laughs> to, to tell me I'm wrong um, or, or or whatever, something like that. Um, yeah, the that that one that someone's put in there. That'd be great. Thank you. Any other blockers asks needs? Okay, questions? Parking lot? Okay. Nice. A question is like, yes. There, so some of the, I, I noticed in some of the Go code, we, we don't make like very, 
we, we use interfaces as if they're Java interfaces instead of Go interfaces. And I'm wondering if that's like intentional or not. Like we don't really take advantage of the fact that Go lets you just define the interface wherever it's used yep. and say, okay, we'll just put the contract on the way the interface is used where yep. it's used. So we should do that in some cases, but like it's just this problem we have with Go actually. Um, like there are really two things we use interfaces for. We use them for uh, contracts we want to publish. We're saying like we expect you to satisfy this interface. Um, and actually, um, yes, like effectively we use it for documentation in many places and that's why we have them there. Uh, we probably should do more of like defining the interface where we consume them, but in some cases that would require us like redefining the interfaces all over the place, that's what we don't. Uh, it, it, I think it really just depends on the module. Uh, in, in many cases, we also just use interfaces less often. Um, sometimes we do that because we think, you know what, it, like, like, okay, so like in, in Go, you're not supposed to return interfaces show us return the concrete type but sometimes we just use interfaces anyways because we're saying look like we may want to change the concrete type in the future we want to add additional concrete types so we're just going to turn a concrete type or so we're just going to turn an interface like we do this all over the place in um in uh like multi-adder and stuff like that um it does have a cost like a runtime cost of allocations so we need to be more careful about this but that's one of the reasons like it, it depends on the case, I guess. So a lot of it's also just like people who came into working with this had experience with other languages, so they brought those ideas with them instead of doing it the go way. Um, but like if you're looking at like lib P2P and like how like you have the host interface and all that kind of stuff, or the swarm and the connection, all that kind of stuff like that, that's that that's just because like we want to be able to abstract over this. We're saying like, hey user, use these things here. Like here are the types you should be using, um, because like you can't rely on the concrete implementation basically. Uh, that's why we do that. I guess, like, as an example, like some of the issues that I, I posted about, like, you know, go loop P2P record types, mm -hmm. I don't have to have a long discussion with anyone about mm -hmm. changing the record type. I could just make a new interface in the library it's used and the library the thing is being consumed by. And, like, no, no global changes to loop P2P core required. In some cases, yes. The concern here is, like, uh, it's like if you, Basically, we have something that's supposed to conform to some interface. Uh, then, like, you have to make sure it continues to conform to the interface. The other issue is obviously, like, uh, if you uh, like, if you change one thing and add a feature to it, and then you change something else to say, like, I need something that has this new feature, then anything else that might implement that feature doesn't like, doesn't work. This is, I think, one of the primary reasons we use interface support. It's like, basic support to problem with Go. Go is written by Google for Google for like the, for, for like a single model repo, which like, and it works really, really well for that. But in our situation, we have many repos, many different people working on these things. So like we need some point where we can say like, you know, agree on these things. Like that's effectively what we use like interfaces for. It's like, this is the contract we are going to satisfy. Um, and this is the contract required. Like, so like if you redefine the same interface in a bunch of different packages that consume something, instead of just defining it one central location, then it's all, like unclear like when upgrades happen and you can have situations where like things just don't work for magical reasons. If that makes sense. Um, it's like I, I don't know the specific case you're talking about here. Uh, no, it's it's good it's good like context though, just to get like the shape of why things look the way they do. Yeah. So like you're talking about the validator interface, like you want to add a feature to the validator interface. Like the, the, the reason we have the validator interface defined here is that then like I know that anywhere I can find a validator. And then I can pass it off to IPFS, and then it will always like be a valid validator. And like if you look at IPFS, like in IPFS itself, like we have, like we just store the validator, and then we use it and we construct everything. And so like if we just define the validator at the endpoints, then like I could have one validator somewhere, and one validator somewhere else, and like it can work properly together. So yeah, that's really why. All right. Thanks. That's my answer to that question. Any other questions or other? Nope. Time's up. Time is definitely up. Sorry. Okay. See y'all.